recently I've been working on these animations that um, utilize StyleGAN and then actually like sort of reprint them um, onto paper and then I bring them back into uh, a digital format to animate them again. Uh, these are kind of inspired by like Stan Brackage and other experimental filmmakers who are using like found footage and either painting over top of the cells or using optical printers or other things. Um, so I built this sort of like kind of wonky pipeline in order to actually make these happen. Um, and a couple of folks have asked me like to just sort of show the process so that they can maybe see if it's possible for them to do something similar. So that I just walk through sort of like how I make these. Um, it's a lot of steps. Um, the hardest step is basically Adobe Illustrator and the script I have. Uh, it may not be perfect for folks to try and use, but I'll sort of walk through the process and then you can see if it works for you. Um, yeah, so with that, let's get started. All right, so over here I have a video that I produced uh, using StyleGAN 3. Um, I won't cover that here because I cover it in a lot of other um, of my tutorials, but if you want to go check it out, you're just going to look for uh, StyleGAN interpolations and how to do them. Um, so this is a... Uh, I don't know, like it ends up being, I think, 30 seconds when um, you convert it to uh, 30 frames per second or a little bit slower. I would probably recommend doing this at like 16 or 18 frames a second because uh, you sort of don't want anything too crazy and you sort of want the animation to feel a little bit more of that like jittery hand animated kind of look. So um, we'll take this video and we're going to convert this into individual frames. Um, we need to take those individual frames to put them in a grid to print them out. So uh, the way to do that is, again, I've covered this in a lot of my videos. Um, I highly recommend checking out some of my FFmpeg videos. Um, we're just going to use an FFmpeg command here. So we're in the terminal. Um, we're going to say the input is our video file. And we're going to um, just set an output. So we actually just want to output this to a folder, which I realized I need to just make. So let me just put this here. So in here, I'm going to make a folder, and let's just call it frames demo. Copy that path, and we'll remove that. So we basically just have an input path and an output path. And the output path, we need to define it as um, a series of numbers. So this percent %09d.png is going to generate a, uh, the output file name is going to be nine digits long. So that's what the percent %09d is. Um, it's just going to say, give me nine digits long, and then sequence it in order. So it'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we'll just run this. And you'll get a little bit of this like error message stuff, which is just about conversion. It's not really the end of the world if it happens like this. But you will see we are outputting our video. Great. So now when I come back to this folder... Um, in frames demo, you should see it starts at, well, I guess it starts at one. So one, two, three, four, and you'll see this is a series of frames. So it doesn't actually matter, um, like, the frame steps, because basically what you're going to do is just print it, and then you set a input frame rate when you actually generate the video back out. So um, you don't need to set a frame rate here. I do recommend that you play a little bit with how style again in the interpolation space, like actually setting how long in the interpolation is. Um, you want to maybe think of it as 18 frames a second. You don't want to generate a ton of frames. So you may have to do some math. Like let's say you want a 30 second video at 18 frames a second. So it's going to be 540 total frames. So you have to make sure that you calculate your style again interpolation to be that length. Because again, the other thing about style again is we can make things loop. So you want to do that. So we've got a looping video so we can share it to Instagram or whatever. So this is kind of the important thing is like making sure your video is the right length. Um, and then you can convert it to frames using this process. So next step is I want to get this into a grid that I can then print out. And I could, of course, go through and like, I don't know, make a Photoshop template and drop them in, you know, one image at a time. That's a huge pain in the ass. Don't do that. Um, most of the work you'll see me do is like I try to automate my process. So it's a lot less steps and it's like a couple little commands. So um, I have created a script that I use in, let's see, where is it here? Is it here? Maybe it's not here. Um, let's see. Uh, Visual Studio Code. So what I have is, in Visual Studio Code, I have a script that I've written that works with Adobe Illustrator. Um, I have some videos on my um, YouTube channel about how to write scripts for Adobe Illustrator. Uh, it is kind of a dark art. I don't know a lot of people that do it. Um, 
I would all say this a little outside the scope of the video, but I can quickly highlight sort of how this works. So in here at the top of these pages, you'll see I've got a bunch of these settings. And what these do is these sort of define my grid space and how many images I should place on a grid. So usually what I'll do is I'll go into Illustrator first and I'll just make a file. So let's say I know that my uh, pages are eight and a half by 11. So I'll just go in here and do 8.5 inches by 11 inches. And then usually what I would do is I would try to drop in one of my images. So let's say I know my image is 1024 px, 1024 px, and that is huge because that is not right, but I want that at 300 dpi. So I think I want to divide this by, let's see, let's do this differently. Let's drop this in, divide by 300. That is not right either. Okay, let me figure out what I did here. Um, so basically the dimension I think is, what is this here? It's 192. So what we would do then is we would just say, oops. So this is uh, essentially 1024 at 300 DPI. So what I would kind of do is I would kind of figure out the layout here. So I'd set this up, you know, okay. So at 1024, I can only do, you know, maybe two by three. This actually is not the right size. I don't know what size is being set here. Okay, anyway, um, this is partly why I think this script is a little, like, we need to figure it out. I know that I can usually fit, like, 4 up um, at 400 dpi or something. All right, sorry, on an 8.5 by 11. Um, so usually I would sort of figure out what the grid is. I would sort of figure out my dimensions um, and my starting point. So there's a couple variables in here that are, let's look at this one. So this is square 1080 on 8.5 by 8.5, 11 sheet, sheets of paper. It does 4 by 4. And then this is the starting point, uh, top left in points. And then it defines my width and my height. So basically I need to scale my images that get imported into that position, um, into the right scale for printing. And then um, down here is just sort of like some functions that allow me to actually generate this. So this is a script that will easily convert and bring in all these. And I'll show you how to use this in a minute, but essentially like this is where it gets, this is probably where like, this would probably be the most challenging part for folks. Um, like, let's just set the vertical here. So we'll set this, I think this should work. Let's try it. So um, this will create a grid of images or a number of pages for me to then print out. So let me just quickly show how this would work. Um, so you can run a script directly from uh, Illustrator by going to Illustrator, File, Scripts, and then you can go and like find the script. I tend to just use Visual Studio Code. Um, if you YouTube, like Google, like Google or go to YouTube and look for like, um, mostly it's After Effects people, but if you type in like After Effects scripting, um, Visual Studio Code or something, there's a bunch of installation stuff you need to set up. So you'll run this by going Shift Command P and you'll say Illustrator. And the script is then gonna ask you like, hey, what am I looking for here? So I just wanna go to my folder where it's my folder of images. So I believe it's in here and it's frames demo and you're just gonna select the folder and it's gonna take a little bit of time to churn through this. This is a pretty he heavy process and Illustrator doesn't really like doing this stuff. But after a little bit of time, you should then have a file that has generated all of your um, images into grids that you can then print out on a sheet of paper. And you'll see here, like, everything starts to yell at me because Adobe really doesn't like doing this. But you will see here that you're starting to get our images. And now I'm realizing, look at this, that, this is my, that my grid is, or my variables are set up wrong here. This is not set up for a square image. So if I go, were to go back here, um, yeah, you'll see item width 192, height 129. So this is not set up, this is for set up for 1600 by 1080. So actually you want to like turn this off and then um, it looks like this is what I want. So square 1080 by 1080. So I turn this back on and I would run this command again. Now I'm not really going to run this again because you just saw it takes a little bit of time to run. Um, but essentially this is going to generate all of the sheets of paper you need to print out. And this is again like it's kind of a ridiculous process. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this unless you're like really hardcore into this look. But what you'll see is it generates a bunch of pages, right? So here's page one, two, three, four, five. So now what I do is I go in and 
um, I would print this out onto, I tend to print it on sheets of paper um, of books I've bought or of other material. And I, cause I want that sort of like glitchy sort of like, again, experimental cinema look. So you could print this onto, I don't know, you could print it onto nice paper, or like do whatever you want to do with it. Um, maybe some of you just want to basically like print your stills in a grid and review it for some reason. I don't know what you, exactly what you do with that, but um, you can do a lot with this sort of function. Um, so once you've got that, then you print them out. Once you print them out, then you rescan them in. So usually what I have here in my folders are also a series of scans. And you can just sort of see like, here's what my scans look like. So, you know, it prints out with the number. It's very helpful to remember like what number and what sequence it is. Because when you start printing these out, if you don't keep track of the number, you're like, wait, was this first, second, third, like that sort of thing. So um, I print these out. And then uh, I go through the process of opening them one by one in Photoshop. See here, I've got one open. And you just go in and you sort of like straighten your image. You go in, you straighten it. And the really key thing here is you have to make sure that your your size of your crop box is always the exact same size. So you can't just go in and draw a, a freeform box around this. It'll break our next step. Make sure that your grid, the, the fixed size here, is exactly your output dimensions. So if you want 1080 by 1080, it's going to be 1080 times you know whatever your grid is. So it'd be 1080 times 4. In this case, it's 1080 times 4 by both dimensions. This is actually 1032. It's a little funky, but um, it worked out. So like you have to make sure that every one of your crops is the exact same size. Because if it's not, it's going to get weird when you start to do the next step, which is generating these into individual frames. So now I've got all these cropped out. So you can sort of see here in my folders, crops. So this is page 1, page 2, page 3, page 4. Now what I need to do is I'm going to convert these into individual frames. Because again, we want to make have basically have a frame animation. So now I've got this all set up as a grid. Um, we're going to use another tool that I have, which is the Dataset Tools Library. Um, again, I would recommend that if you're unfamiliar with these tools, that you um, do a quick YouTube search of my channel for Dataset Tools, and you'll sort of see some other things here. So we're going to use Python. We're going to use the window.py command. Um, and if you're ever unsure of how to use these, you can always do dash H and that's going to spit out the help function. Alright, so you'll see here we have an input folder, an output folder, some height, some width, um, and then some, with the, the other function we're going to use here is called numbered. So let's just build this up here. So we're going to do python window.py dash I. We're going to feed it in our path. And oops, we don't actually want crops. We want, no, we do want crops, sorry. Um, so we want crops, and then we want to give it an output. So let's go ahead and just name it frames output demo. And then we want to set a fixed height and width. And for this particular video, like I, or this particular project, like I said, it's a 1032. Um, and then you want to include numbered. And numbered is going to regenerate our numbers for us. So you'll kind of see like we're doing this, I don't know, maybe convoluted flip-flop process. So when I run this, it's going to run over all of my individual crops. And you'll see here that now I'm getting back out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if you scroll through it one by one, you'll see, okay, cool, there's my animation. And now you'll notice here, like also because I printed this on a color laser jet printer, um, I also get kind of these like funky little like you know rastery sort of graphics. Um, and even when I print, I, when you print this over black, you'll see like you still even get a little bit of the detail because most black is not true black, so it still prints a little bit of color over it. And this is kind of what I love about this process is you see these things fly by, but you can even if you even pause on a frame, you'll sort of still see like the whole image. Um, so now I've got this thing where it's set up into uh, my individual frames. So now I need to do my FFmpeg process in reverse. Um, so the way to do that is, let's just go, I'm going to type up a little bit here just so I remember exactly what my process is. So to do this um, in 
FFmpeg in reverse. Let's just build this up. So let me. So you can read this sort of line by line. So first we're going to do FFmpeg, which is the command to generate this. We're next going to do input. So now we want to feed in the input, and the input is actually wrong here. The input should be this. So the input is this path, but now we want to read in back in those frames. So it's percent %09d.png. And we're going to set the frame rate to be 18. We're going to set the PIX format to YUV420P. Um, this is so that this video can be looked at in QuickTime. Um, if you don't do this, it can only open in like other video formats, which is kind of annoying because I just like QuickTime is really easy to play with. So uh, next is our video codec. So again, this is for QuickTime. If you're interested in other video codecs, there's a lot of op options within FMPEG. Just Google it. You can find it. And then lastly, we want to do where our output is and how we want to save this. We're going to save this in M M MP4 and we're going to do reprint and let's just call it demo. So we run this and now it's going to rerun back through all of those frames. And it finishes, and then we go back over here, and we should have an output video now. Now, this might be a little fast. It's kind of flickering by pretty quickly. So what I might want to do is this is where it gets kind of like into the nitty-gritty. Maybe I want to slow it down to like 12 frames per second. That's like a normal animator speed. It's what we would call on the twos, right? So it's like um, a little bit slower, uh, but it will probably feel a little bit like less like glitchy. And yes, we want to overwrite that. And then we can play this. And you'll see now the animation is a little bit slower and kind of has a little bit more of that stop motion feel. Um, but it's a little bit easier to actually read in these sort of like black amorphous shapes sliding by the screen. So that's the whole end-to-end -end process for this. Uh, I'm aware it's very convoluted, and you, many of you are probably watching this video and be like, why would you ever do this? Um, and I like convoluted things. Uh, it's why I got into machine learning and why I get into some of these weird animation corners. Um, so I don't know. Maybe five of you will use this process and find it interesting. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, like please hit me up in the YouTube uh, dis discussion and chat. Um, the particularly like I mentioned like the illustrator script is pretty gnarly um, but if I can help with any of it I'm happy to uh, if you're interested in learning more about how this works again like I've taught some like little classes on on using scripting in Adobe and if you're interested I, I'm always happy to record more of those demos because I think it's pretty interesting uh, being able to script Adobe applications but it's definitely a bit of a dark art and a bit of a like uh, painful process, but um, I'm happy to cover that for anyone that's interested in it. So anyway, um, this is definitely going to be like one of my least watched videos, but I hope people have found value in this. Um, if you do end up using stuff, let me know. Um, and anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you realize how crazy I am um, doing this process, uh, but maybe you found value in it. So um, anyway, until next time, um, thanks again, and I uh, hope you found something out of this video that is useful for you.